Hey everybody, I'm Jessica Putnam Phillips and welcome to ClayShareCon! Day one still! Uh, and we have a fabulous demo planned for you. We have Jeff from GR Pottery Forms and he's going to teach you how to make three tiered stands. So I want to get right to the excitement because I know you do too. So we're going to throw it on over to Jeff. Hey Jeff! Hello there! Glad to be here. What a, what a fantastic opportunity and uh, it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, we're so glad to have you. So I know everybody's excited. So as people ask questions, I'll just uh, relay them to you and you can just answer. So if you are listening and wa if you're watching this broadcast and you have a question, just type it in and I can ask you. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, you know, um, you know, I really was kind of thinking about like all the um, op options and opportunities for uh, what to talk about, what to uh, show. And um, I really uh, feel like it would be good to just uh, talk about like some of the, all the different options that you can have with the forms. And uh, I think we're kind of here to talk about kind of new tools and new things. And uh, so from GR Power East forms, um, there are just so many options and so many techniques that uh, Jessica is uh, helping you to uh, kind of discover and find. So um, just using the forms is, uh, and so many different options is great. So I want to just show you just some options today. Maybe first I'll just talk about the, the um, hardware. And I know uh, we ran out of the hardware, so we have a few of these silver ones left right now. But if you, um, if you go on Amazon, they have plate stands like this as well, this hardware. So, uh, uh, and maybe, uh, yeah, I don't know if uh, they have different ones, but uh, anyway, this hardware, it's such a great thing because really all you need to do is uh, build your plates and your platters. And um, you can just, the one thing you need to do is to uh, put a hole in the center so that you can um, then put that hardware through. And it's just a, a hole that will basically hold the end of the screw in, in there and it basically kind of pinches itself together to kind of hold itself in place. So depending on your, your pieces, they, it seems like it's really wobbly, but it's gonna stay, it's kind of like if you ever loaded a kiln and those kiln shop, kiln shells are wobbly and your feelers are gonna fall. They're not gonna fall, they're just, they just make you feel that way, right? <laughs> <laughs> so same with this hardware, right? It's uh, it, um, you can just connect it together. Now you have this lovely serving piece. So you have so many options of um, what sizes to use on the bottom and the top. And um, I'll come back to this a little bit too, but just let me show you this other one real quick here. So everybody's saying hi and how much they can't wait for this and they're so excited. Oh, hello, hello everybody. Thank you for coming in. Such a great, it's such a great thing. Um, this one I used, uh, I probably better hold it. Oh, you can see, maybe see it on the top view here. You can see the, um, you know, I have one off to the side and maybe if I show the front view here. That's the coolest it. thing. <laughs> and, and uh, the thing is, I made this one so that uh, we unscrew the bottom, maybe. It's a little bit of unscrewing here. So depending on you know what you want to serve and um, what's on those pieces, you can kind of alter it depending on um, on what you're serving. So. And really, uh, you know, you're going to use these big platters. If you're using these big platters, you're probably going to have them just for serving pieces anyway. Uh, but for this one, I have two holes in there. So you have one in the center and then one in the, in the side. So if I really wanted to adjust this to be um, a centered platter, then I could do it for that. But if I wanted to have a whole big pile of chips or something here and I uh, have a little less dip and have this main focus, um, I could do that too. So it's just by adding an extra bowl in the plate, uh, it gives us those options for when whatever we're serving. So kind of a fun, fun way too. So just, uh, you just have to kind of plan 
And one thing, um, and I just want, I'm going to talk about this hardware first here, and then we can get maybe just make a flat or two to show you what we need to do. And I pre pre prepped some so we can um, even finish them if we if we have time. So, so this we had one, a question. Are you going to okay. show how to do the hole, like how to get it centered, putting the hole in? You're going to yeah, show yeah, that, right. So during the during the demo, I'll um, show you that. So, and, I and thankfully we have a lot of a lot of room for error in a sense, so it doesn't have to be perfectly centered. Um, don't fret about those kinds of things, um, especially when you put food on there. People aren't gonna aren't gonna see that, but I'll talk about it more. Um, if you ordered some of this hardware from me from the very beginning, we actually I put I bought some other size washers and included them with the hardware, but now they don't. Um, so you kind of I'm not quite sure like if it's an advantage to have an extra washer or if it's a disadvantage because you can't quite get it as tight. But anyway, if you want to make it feel better, you can buy a little bit bigger washer that you can buy at your normal hardware store. And then it uh, will fit right on top of the of the um, little hardware there in the uh, this thing, right? So, yeah. So that's the hardware. So, and then that would just go underneath your plate and kind of add a little bit more support and more strength. And they make a bunch of different um, patterns and textures and stuff. I would, I would uh, recommend not wash, probably not washing and washing this hardware. And then you can wash your plate and your dishwasher if you need to too. But uh, yeah, just extra things. So a lot of times these hardware comes with all these just extra little grommets. And these I think are great so that you don't break your, your pottery. It makes it go really snug. It's like a little piece of foam, like a little foam washer. And that will allow you to um to uh it will allow it to get that really tight together well. Yeah. So there's a little, and the, the amazing thing is, I love these things that are so simple that create such great uh, opportunities. This little screw is the only thing that really holds it together. So it's just a screw, and then this dec these decorative sleeves that kind of hold everything together. And this is the same hardware that you could go to like IKEA and buy like a glass plate stand or TJ Maxx or wherever. It's the same stuff. Just the, the bonus is that you get to put your own handmade uh, work in there. And uh, you could put nice decals or Mishima, just like I uh, was talking about earlier, on your plates and uh, just create so many more options and, and fun. So make it look like a pro, <laughs> which you are. <laughs> so so I, I don't know if there's any other little questions at the moment, but. Uh, a few folks are asking about the size hole to put in. I responded saying that you're going to show us, right? Okay, yeah, I'll I'll show you that here in a second. So if you want to shout it out, you can too. But it's it's we you can wait if you want to. Yeah, no, I'll I'll just I'll tell I'll tell I'll tell that more in a minute here. Uh, these are some plates that I made with um, Plum Island Transfers. She's a great uh, person to check out, and she just has these foam. And I know, I think Jessica has talked about these foam, making your own templates, um, using a die cutter to make your own. So these are just an example. I just wanted to show you of like, you know, you could really make these fancy decorative edge, um, this lovely serving platters, right? And uh, yeah, so that's, uh, so there's all kinds of options, all kinds of fun. And you really could just pick any size, um, any size, uh, form that you want um, to do that. Yeah. So, and if you want to learn how to make your own templates, I have a class teaching how to make your own craft home templates. So perfect. it's easy. Okay, great. Yeah. So it's easy. Um, I just wanted to shout out before we got into it too far that Jeff is doing 20% off on his website and you don't have to use a code. It's automatically off. So you can shop away. Definitely. And, and uh, Oh, go ahead. Oh, and I just want to say it's grpotteryforms.com is the website so that people know where to go. And I think there's a kind of got a great link there on the um 
on the place here con to the link you right into the shop yes. into the store if you have difficulty ordering tools feel free to call us we have a direct number um it's a little little harder and trickier it takes a little time to do it on the phone so highly recommend um doing it on online but um if you really have really uncomfortable with that uh, feel free to call and sarah will probably be the one to uh help you and ask those questions answer those questions for you and help you get the order in so um so, so uh, and and i'm sorry about the um we ran out of that hardware but we should have the hardware in probably within a month or so so you could check back and uh get your place uh, place your discount then we normally do um we normally have a a 10 percent because of being promoting a uh, place here so it's normally 10 percent but this for this week of the conference it's uh 20 percent so for the 40 hours 40 hours of the conference <laughs> only it's uh 20 percent that's right so it ends <laughs> Yeah, and a normal 10%, there's a little bit of restrictions. There's a few items that we don't um, discount because they're already discounted. But um, but but it's like 80% of the what's on the website. And uh, there's definitely some like certain size. You'd be able to get any size you want. It's just whether you could get it in a kit or not. But uh, yeah, so that's that that will be available after the conference. But um, and that's a manual, a manual um you got to type in the code place here. But for this week, for this week, you don't have to do anything on that. And it's so still, it's till 10 p.m. Eastern time on Sunday. Between now, right, and 10 p.m. Eastern Sunday. So yeah. you've got time, folks. You can. De Jeff is going to be demoing with us every day during ClayShareCon. I'll remind you every day, and we'll definitely remind you on Sunday. So you don't so miss I out. And if you want to get your order in um, today and then you see something on Saturday that, oh man, I wish I would have waited. We try, we try to do our best to combine those orders. And uh, so you don't have to pay shipping twice. So uh, we will refund you for that second shipping if that uh, happens. He is the best. I ordered two, I ordered some things thinking you combine shipping for me once too. So uh, he's fabulous. I agree. Well, I'm just kind of prepping this lab. I'm going to make some, uh, I'm using the 8 by 15 oval and a 5 by 10 oval to make a big uh, serving platter. And I thought I'd just kind of quick run through. I know there's all kinds of videos and um, things that you can see more in depth about this process. What I really want to focus it on is like, like kind of like those questions you're talking about is like where to put the hardware. Um, Kind of problems that may may exist or um you know just uh things that deal with that hardware so that's really my focus for today and definitely ask questions if you want but uh more in-depth information is out there for other things but uh yeah so i like to um when i started um started doing this i was doing making big platters and uh large plates for uh, art fairs and art festivals. I was trying to, uh, my job was eliminated during the economy and I had to find a way to uh, shoot, to uh, figure out a way to get a paycheck. And uh, so I started doing my, what I was doing on the side and tried to turn that into a business. And it worked really well, but I, I had to develop uh, the product that I was gonna sell. And, I was really focused on large platters. I was really kind of targeting the wedding market. And a lot of the, the good art fairs were during the summer. The people were, oh, I need to pick up a wedding gift for this wedding I'm going to this afternoon. <laughs> oh, art's great for art, for wedding gifts, right? And so I was really focused on platters and I was really focused on uh, making this exterior lift. And so um, so when I did it, I was, I was um, uh, thinking about that outside edge and uh, doing that. And so there's lots of, there's definitely so many ways that you can do this. And that's what's been un unbelievable to see now that we're selling the forms that everybody has their own way of uh, kind of doing things and developing things. And so um, what I'm sharing is not necessarily the best way, but it's the way that I found was the best for me. So um, 
I like to, I love this outside lift. I love to have a foot always. I love to, um, but my surface design, my um, texture or detail is was not my strength. It was more of kind of creating simple form, make more on the form than on the actual surface. So, um, but now there's so many more, I feel like there's a few more options with uh, transfers and uh, decals and uh, that kind of stuff that would have really probably changed the game for me a little bit, but um, but yeah, definitely. So I was really focused on figuring out how to um, to build these uh, these these lift formed uh, platters, certain platters. Maybe. So this is a great one. This is a great one that you could use. This would be a this would be an ideal wedding gift for for you for the summer or or, or to sell if you are selling your work. But um, but yeah, so. I have a what question. I wanna... If you, I don't want to interrupt, but um, the for the um, you're showing some transfers and this the templates, the foam templates. Where does that? What's that site? Oh, it's a, it's a. Well, let's see. Actually, I think it's uh, the artist's name. It's um, Melinda Allen Ceramics. Melinda yeah. Allen Ceramics. Yep. Sorry, I should have given this before. That's, That's -E okay. L Y N N A L L E N ceramics um, dot com, and you can. She has Instagram account. Melon, under Melon Allen Ceramics. I don't know if that's right. Um, I think that's right. Spelled it right. If I didn't spell it right, everybody, I will get the correct spelling. I'll have Jeff. Um, send me the text me the, the spelling so i got it right i think i did it right she's she's this is a small batch artist you know she doesn't have a, a huge amount of products so she's wonderful she's i think like a lot of you guys in the play play share community um just trying to find ways to support her habit right and uh and enjoy uh, exactly <laughs> work and stuff so so also be care be cautious that she's not uh gonna be uh have this like customer service team. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, yeah, it's right? one uh, person. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so so back to this platter. I, what I'm what I always think about, kind of a quick rundown is when I'm making these big platters, I'm trying to roll about enough, enough clay out to uh, just enough for this platter, and then I want to make an, about a two inch or so, inch and a half lip so I have all this extra clay and so now I'm not kind of running this clay through over and over. Um, one quick tip that I always like to say especially with these platters or large dinnerware is to use fresh clay. That's that is um, that is one of the uh, like the, the one recommendation that I would have if you're having trouble is make sure that you're using your wet fresh clay especially for these big platters. Um, and if that's if you're when you're draping too, so in the, in the process that I'm doing here. So you um, then you don't have those variables of some of it, uh, you know, not quite wet well enough, or um, what that all, all these factors that can happen and just basically eliminate some of your variables. So so I can just remove some of this clay. I would maybe keep some of this clay to make a foot, and uh, I guess I could. Uh, I'll give you a quick, quick uh, tour on that in a minute. So I'll set these off to the side. I have another slab over here too, if I need to uh, get that, but it's not quite enough clay for the for the foot. So, all right. And I'm I'm gonna probably spend more time on on the finished pieces than on the making, but um, just trying to kind of keep monitoring the time and. Uh, See if you have any questions about this initial process. So, then they have a question on the discount. Uh, does that apply to bundles? So, if someone was buying a set, it does this week. Not does normally. this week? Whoa, okay, everybody, that's a game changer. So, it does apply to bundles and it's only for Clay Share Con. So, no code needed, just got to order by 10 p.m. Eastern Time Sunday. All right, that's that's it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, totally, it's a great thing, and uh, I know they're. Normally the bundles, some of the bundles count and some of them don't. So I'm sorry it's confusing, but it just depends on what percentage we're giving you already. 
make it all work. So the beautiful thing about slabs, right, is that uh, you can add texture. And even if you're doing it by hand, you can, uh, here's MKM stamps. You know, uh, I saw MKM was giving away some stamps there. So uh, part of the giveaway. So here is one where it's a, it's a stamp on the end of this, this kind of contraption here. That gives you, and I'm gonna, I think actually tomorrow I'm talking about um, textured lips. So you, I'll talk a little bit, a lot more about this tomorrow and, uh, and go through that a little bit more. But just so we have a little bit of action on there for our, our uh, lasers to do their thing, right? And so what I'm gonna do is I have all these nice boards here. And these are just, these just happen to be MDF boards. And actually it's funny, I was, uh, these, are, these are from when I was in Buffalo. And I know Jessica came then for- Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I still have these boards. These were for what I did a making tape there, right? And uh, and so anyway, but I yeah, haven't really- Yeah, it's been a while. I just got them back out just for the no. <laughs> <laughs> I have more of these now though. <laughs> Plaster ones. So How thick is your slab? Uh, it's about a quarter inch. That's what I would guess. Okay, thanks. And I just did a little flip, so that way the I can kind of center where the clay is on the form there, right? Now what I'm going to do is kind of gently uh, hold the, make sure the clay stays in place, like doing that top little finger marks. And what I do is, what I want to do is, I want to kind of push the clay towards the form, so it keeps that clay nice and even, especially with these big, large platters. And when I'm pushing on my fingers, I'm ba basically just barely touching the clay. If you um, start to make ridges in the clay, you're pressing too hard. And now what I'm going to do is go around those edges. You can see that the clay has a lot of texture on it. So it, um, I really like to leave that texture on. One, it saves me some time, but two, it really gives me proof that I um, need to give some attention to this edge. So I'm a huge believer that uh, compressing the clay and compressing the clay in its shape kind of helps uh, warping and holding the piece together especially in this uh with large platters you can get up you can get a lot you can do a whole different process with small stuff than these big platters right and i know a lot of you have probably tried to make big platters and had they're tricky they're difficult they're fussy but um, if you just kind of follow certain steps you can uh, you can do it definitely can do it so what what clay are you using had a few questions for that. Yeah, this is a standard 182G. Okay. Uh, Pittsburgh is not too far from where I'm at and here in uh, Michigan. So it was just happened to be a clay that um, one of the clay artists was using here. So, uh, and I really like it. I think it's a really great clay for hand building and, um, and throwing too. So. The G part means it has some grog in it. So uh, some people may not like that feel of the grog, especially throwing. So, uh, but, and it's probably not quite as nice as B mix if you're putting a lot of color on it. It is a little bit of an off white, kind of almost like a pink white, but it's really forgiving and really, um, really durable. So I love how the, um, you can see the pattern of the from the texture because there was no there's no moisture where the where the texture was. Um, and I'm just going to quick do this really quick. Um, typically, what I would do is add the foot on there, but I want to show you this one part is uh, using spacers. 
and I'm going to use a thin one and a thick one. So I'm just going to put them underneath there. And you can see how big this lip is that I have here, right? So to make this big lip even, even though it's irregular, in part of this class, I want to show you that you can make really fun, irregular shapes. Um, and by using these spacers, this now kind of evens out your lip and creates a consistent um, angle on, on this lip. So, uh, and that's really important when you put it in the firing that it will hold itself up, right? This, this piece is pretty big. This is a, a, I have a, I have a, I have a big kiln. I have a, and a medium kiln, a Scott 1027. Um, I forget what that translates to LNL, but the, the main LNL kiln, but um, I think it's about 20 inches, the kiln um, diameter, the in, interior diameter. So it's, uh, anyway, so this is a large platter, but I really want to show you this edge and just by adding those spacers underneath there, it uh, really gives you this nice kind of edge. Nice, and, yeah. And so now the thing is to leave this right on top of here because of this outside edge uh, for a good period of time. And I'm going to switch over now to kind of finishing them. I have two kind of made, and so I wanted to show you that part more. But I just also wanted to show you that you can make big irregular shapes and uh, how to address that irregular edge. So um, the great thing is if you look at horizontally this plate, it should all be flat, even though if you look at um, this lip versus this lip, it's different in size. So. I had to ask um, the spacers, they were, they're on your site. Are they listed under a specific area? They're under the tools. That's a great they're question. They're under tools. Okay. Under they're under tools. tools. Yeah. The other great thing that we worked really hard, uh, Matt here specifically, is uh, to work on our search function on our website. And, you know, I'm old school. I know. Like my kids, they automatically go and search everything. They don't they don't try to guess where things are or look for things. They automatically just type in what they're looking for and it goes right to it. Um, and so that's what's really nice on the um, on the on our uh, <laughs> sorry, stop thinking here for a second. On our website, there's um you can you can just type in spacer and it'll come up with all the options of spacers. And the little secret here, you know, we don't always like promote that we have seconds, but sometimes if we have a lot of something, they might still be active but not showing. So if you type in seconds into the, don't well, give me a big hint. But unfortunately, <laughs> this week they're they're included, but normally seconds aren't included on the. Um, Everyone, I think Jeff just said seconds are twenty percent off. If you go type in seconds on his site, you can get twenty percent off. They're gonna be gone. Really additional, are, right? an additional twenty percent off what they already are. Oh my goodness! But um, to be really gonna, truthful, I don't. They're know they're gonna, gonna, <laughs> they're gonna be. Gone. They could be gone already. <laughs> you know, a clue for a, a treasure chest that we may not be able to use. That's not that may not even exist, right? <laughs> well, True. Oh, one thing I, I was going to show you here. Unfortunately, I put this, uh, I didn't do it before I put the, the form underneath there. But a great trick, especially like, especially if you're going to make the um, this five by 10 and you want to make a foot, what you do is you impress the form into your slab, into your scrap of clay, which creates this indentation here that you can um, make that edge. Because the tricky thing is if we're making a, um, and it really only matters on some of the sizes, not all of them, but like this oval, you see how how this edge is. And if we take, try to take a coil and bend it around this corner, we may get it to, to um, kind of buckle and overlap. So if we can cut that edge, with our little foot maker, and those of you guys 
have all made your own from the class. So but if you don't want to make your own foot maker from my class, you can buy one from Jeff. <laughs> yeah, from either way, right? So if you have one already or you need, need one. Jeff's got them. <laughs> real, it's really important though, really, you know, to have that, cut that clay, that slab on that angle. And then you could, if you had enough of a slab, you could make a one piece foot. But now you can see how that uh, that foot, sorry, I'm probably making Kevin work a lot by uh, switching from camera angle to camera angle. But I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, can, it's good. You he said it's good. How, yeah, he's good. So you can see how uh, that just fits right on that corner. And then you could you could do that for the other side. And um, I made one for this big one. I didn't actually measure the big one. The big one's a little more gentle, but I could um, just add that on there. One one tip, and I don't know, I'll probably talk about this more later on in the week, but one tip for putting these, doing these feet is if you let them sit up for a little while, they will um, stiffen up. And then they're much easier to apply to the bottom. So just give it, uh, make eight or 10 platters, right? And then by the time you've got done with the eighth one, the first one is ready to put the foot on. So, uh, and I would, I, I am a really big believer, especially with these big platters, to um, be cautious with. Uh, not making your foot too decorative because the clay is, it, this is where all the pressure, all the weight is kind of happening. So make sure, kind of think about this foot as like a foundation of your house, that you're building a foundation for this big platter and that it needs to be um, dressed really well. So I'm just gonna show you here, like what I like to do is cut these on a, the straight, bevel it's not like a triangle it's just it's not uh, straight but if you cut the pieces with an angle you definitely can tell this when it's uh leather hard you can see that i'm not going to see but the clay kind of smushed a little bit but it's got this kind of a little bit of an angle on this edge and if i cut the opposite side with the reverse it will marry up there really nicely and make this nice uh, kind of joining foot. So I might just cut this off here so I can add on that end part. So you can see again here how that kind of angle right there will help it to kind of butt right up to it and uh, join really well. So they kind of, it's like basically like two angles kind of laying against each other. So it makes a nice kind of seam. So. Any questions about, um, I'm going to kind of skip ahead here now from the wet Everybody's clay. loving the foot idea. They think it's great and it's very clever and helpful. So it's good. No questions. Just, well, just comments on how great it is. And the fact everybody's telling what they're buying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, 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 right. Um, but you have an idea, you know, they have the idea of, um, you know, that it's, uh, I don't even know where I was going, but uh, I, never mind. <laughs> but here is a good question here, and I, I was going to talk. I'll talk a little bit when I switch over. You can see the see the platter up ahead of me here. Yeah, I guess you can kind of see it right there. It's just the top view. But uh, um, I have a center foot down there, and I like to put a center foot, and it could even just be as much as a strip of clay on there. It doesn't have to be a full ring or whatever, but I need to have something that's going to support that middle part too. If the if the if the form is over eight inches. Um, so this is eight eight by fifteen. So it's not over eight by fifteen. So we can get away with uh, not having one in the middle. But if you have a clay that's a really fine particle, it could sag there in the middle. So that's how you can solve that just by putting a little clay in there. Actually, I'm sorry, but we have to be um, that would be a normal platter, but since we are making this one for the hardware, we got to make sure that this foot 
in the middle has enough room for that hardware to fit, right? Which is a great segue for the for this other part here. Yeah. yeah, you can see how the the this platter here has this nice big opening, and uh, I can uh, now this hardware. Remember, it's, and it's just a screw that's going to fit here, and it's got to have enough room for that screw to fit. And if you um, wanted to reinforce it a little bit and uh, add a little center part, you could uh, you have a little more room to do that too. You'd make it a little bit bigger of a washer. Okay. They just need to make sure the washer is going to fit for the sizing. That's as far as yeah. someone was asking how small, like, well, what forms would be too small? But as long as the washer fits, yeah. you're good. Totally, totally. So I don't really have an answer because it, it depends on how big you make that opening. But uh, yeah, so just they and they at the hardware store they have like zillions of options of um, of widths and uh, and also the center hole too. I would try to get one that would, would just fit that screw nicely. Okay, so I made these these pieces here at about um, ten. 10 p.m. 10 a.m. this morning, so they've been on the forums for uh, about four hours or so, and really honestly, they could sit on here for a little bit longer. But um, what I'm trying to do is wait for that I can pick this piece up, and it just kind of the, the form the form just falls out that um, that it's nice leather hard. So now I got to be a little bit cautious with it because if I pick it up. Okay, this big thing is going to want to torque a little bit, and uh, it will remember that in the firing. And so, if you wonder why you have like a uh, wobbly plate or platter, because you probably took it off the form too early. And there's definitely tips and, tr there's tips and tricks that you can do, like if you're pressing into foam or uh, doing another technique. There's definitely other ways you can do to. Uh, to uh, avoid that, but uh, yeah, and I think so. And here's my uh, hopefully you saw that. <laughs> it's kind of it's oh, all hard though, right? So it didn't like it needs to be a little bit drier um, for my liking if I were going to do these like production wise and uh, be really concerned about it. But because of the demo here, I'm going to just try to get the cheek and kind of skip ahead here. But now I have this nice big, nice, um, the five by 10 to uh, be the top part of the tray. Or if you really wanted to make like the side, the side piece thing again, we could just add another hole over here too as well. So, so let's just go actually. I'm not, I will address the edge here on these next ones. I might mess with them, but I'm just going to quick show you what I would do for the center piece here. Um, I don't have, we ran out, we gave, we gave all these, we got these little nice little sewing measuring tapes uh, for Nsika last year, and we gave them out to a bunch of people. And uh, we're going to have those back again here in a little bit. So hopefully, um, hopefully in the next, Little while, if you put in order, we'll send one to you. Uh, you might have to, to think, say you want to, but uh, so we have about um, 13 and a half inches in the middle here. So all I'm going to do is just make a mark at uh, about six and three quarters and just kind of have a general idea of what that uh, middle part. The middle of this, and we have six and a half on um, uh, the inside there. So we just gotta just kind of find a mark. And really, again, I I don't um, we're doing pot, we're doing pottery, right? So uh, don't don't worry about this part of making it so perfect because it's uh, the truth is you'll probably never be perfect, right? And don't try to just be you, and uh, just put it in, just put it somewhere close to the middle. <laughs> And uh, well, let's see if I have. Uh, and I'll show you what I do 
And even the whole, even the whole, um, you get super precise. I haven't even taken the time to measure like what the hole should be actually. And so don't fret about that. Um, make it, and then if it's too small, make the next one bigger, right? <laughs> but I'll talk. To you, I'll tell you here in a second. <laughs> so I can just take my little screw here. This is. I always love to just use the measuring tools that I have at hand because you're probably not gonna, you know, get out here, get a little measuring tape out to measure how big your hole is gonna be. So um, just do that. And then if I do the one end, and if I do, you know, the one end up here, or, or and then what I can do is make a mark for this end. This I don't want it to be bigger than this, or it's gonna fall through, right? So, um, so that's where uh, we need to be concerned. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna gently poke through the hole here, and then just do a little flip here, and then we're gonna be gentle with this nice soft plate. And you can see, like, it didn't even become like in the middle of, of my foot here. And that's okay. That's okay. It proves that, that, that a human made it, right? Exactly. <laughs> so they just uh, enjoy those handmade marks. Don't worry about it. They're not uh, all your friends that you give these nice pieces to. They're not going to, they're not going to be talking about that. They're just going to be so amazed that you even gave them pottery, right? They're looking for my exactly. <laughs> so here I have this nice Dolan tool, and uh, the Dolan family Sue, she kind of took over her dad's love um, for making knives, and she worked really hard. So support Dolan when you can. She's just a mama in uh, Arizona making uh, making pottery tools that her dad used to make. Her husband helps her, but anyway. Uh, but most knives have this nice angle on here. And so if I push the knife through, the deeper I push the knife in, the bigger the hole will be, right? So I'm just gonna keep pushing it down in there until I make about the right, the hole, the size that I want it to be. Um, I don't want it to get bigger than that outside ring, right? So we're already have some shrinkage, but I also want a fairly tight fit. And then I can go on the other side. And if the hole isn't quite big enough, then I can kind of level it out a little bit on that side too. And if your clay is leather hard, this hole is going to be really nice to make. It's not going to smear. So you can see how. I need a little more time in this clay to set up, but it uh, you just have other problems to kind of deal with, right? They're not these don't have to be problems, but uh, another thing to kind of worry about. But if it was, uh, you can also use um, if you want to be really precise, you could use a drill bit when it's leather hard, not when it's bone dry because it'll crack. But when it's nice and leather hard, you can drill a hole in there with a drill bit into the clay. Just make sure you're not using somebody's nice uh, sh sharp uh, drill bit. Make sure you buy your own kind of set and have them in your studio. So because the clay is going to dull them out really fast. Somebody might be upset with you if they catch you. <laughs> and then I'm just going to make another hole because I am going to just have that side option here. And I, I'm pretty sure this is a um, get my little tape measure. It's about a quarter. Yeah, it's about three sixteenths. So you really want to make your um, your hole probably five sixteenths, if not. Uh, um, what would that be? Three eighths, maybe three eighths. So, but I also don't tell you uh, specifically because there's always variables, right? And so, and as a as a potter, as an artist, you you need to uh, 
be able to adjust to those variables. So you really need to just know how to figure out what your shrinkage is for the player you're using. Because you may order some hardware where this this part is thicker or thinner. Uh, so once you get your hardware, you can you can make that uh, kind of uh, adjust to that. I forgot how, I forgot we were only going on the, are we, we're going to um to four, right? Are we going to four? Going to four. We're going to four. You got you got you got it's, okay, yeah, you still got time. Uh, you're oh, good. No. You're good. No, no, okay. you're good. I would have warned you. So a uh, few questions. Uh, would you use a hole punch or a corer if you have the one the size you need? Like if you know and you have. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean why a, not, right? If you, sure. yeah, like a cutter. Yeah, yep. I so would use one too. Um, definitely. <laughs> definitely, definitely. And the same thing goes for this. Uh, maybe I got to address it a little bit more here, but um, about eight and a half. So we got about eight and a quarter. So we need to go over just a little bit, looks like. Three and a half again. So we need um, something about a three quarter. Yeah, so that's going to get a little closer. So if you're going to make these, uh, the one thing that you need to do for these um, platters is have a foot on the bottom. And the reason you want to have a foot on there is to be able to hide that hardware and have this recessed part that um, will hide that, but then also um, it won't wobble on your table, right? Because of that hardware being underneath there. So this is the time to. Uh, up the game and make sure you put a foot on there. But I, I, uh, I <laughs> highly encourage the foot. Um, it just, it's kind of like, I like I said something the other day that it's kind of like wearing a pair of shoes. It just gives you that extra support and that, uh, and just that little extra player that you may need, right? Just to, uh, so you can see how this will, once I fire this, um, clean up the edges, Decorate it. Could be this nice, wonderful serving piece. So these were the eight and a half, or I'm sorry, eight by fifteen and five by ten ovals. Oh, another. I don't even know if I told Jessica this yet, but we also have some new ovals. Um, <laughs> these are brand new. Tell me, brand new. these are new. These are new. <laughs> he, he, he was just on the site on Saturday. And these I put on the site for a, a lady who wanted some oval dinnerware. I'm like, yeah, oh, yeah we, should, we should just have that for everybody. Uh, so, yes, you should. <laughs> I'm glad I'm finding out about it. <laughs> yeah, and uh, probably a good chance by in Sika we might have all five sizes to stack them. So, but it would awesome. be really great. This would also be a nice, this would also be a nice, um, Tiered, yeah, Tiered. yeah, that's or or hexagons or any anything really, right? And now I save the you know have the grand finale fireworks here for the end, right? Right. Uh, we have these, and then we're giving away one of these today, right? These uh, the new spherical set. Yes, we are. Well, these well, are just we are, and you're sponsoring it. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. So these are the 11 and the 8 of these. Um, I'll just, but you will get all five sizes in the giveaway. But these are these are a great thing. Um, this is a little quick seg, seg, little tangent here. Is somebody was using putting the if they want to figure out how to how how big if they want to make it next to your lip they were putting their forms on top of another one so that they could cut that edge. So I thought, oh, that was a brilliant idea of uh, um, how to, uh, if you really want to figure out how to cut that edge. And I'll talk about more of that edge and figuring that out later on other thoughts, but, um, but yeah. So guess what these are going to be? <laughs> We're going to make these into cupcake stands. Anybody like cupcake stands? Yes. So because I love cupcakes. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about talking about cupcakes at uh, 
in the afternoon. <laughs> There's no cupcakes in sight here, sadly. Yeah, and so but they look you know, great on those. Yeah. So basically, well, all we had to do is flip these plates around to make a cupcake stand, right? I'm in. I might even. I wish my my daughter is here. She's been making these uh, great uh, drawing cupcakes. So let's just make a quick drawing on here. I love to use um, pencil. Actually, I really prefer like a ballpoint pen to drawing because uh, with this pen, it's a little bit harsh. But if you're really, if you uh, if you're really great, then you have some nice diamond core tools to do this. But uh, those are those are the premium, the gold version. So <laughs> these are my quickly made sketched uh, cupcakes for my cupcake stand. And um, okay, so this is what I need to talk about. So this edge, right? This is the big decision as an artist is to like, you know, where you're going to cut this edge. And um, I always, I always um, want to make sure that if I'm draping the clay over top, that there, there is about a finger width of clay left there. So that now these corners, they don't get too thin and cracked. But now what I can do is shape that uh, down with a rack to however I want that edge to be like. And this also, it's working pretty good. It's a pretty good stage right now, but this really works the best at leather hard. Because what's happening is my, my clay is bunching all up in the, in the, in the rack. But now you can take this edge down as much as you want. So I would really do it this way because then you know how this how thick this is versus trying to guess where this edge is going to be. I know some people have figured out it's like about a quarter inch more than the space, quarter inch more of a slab if you pre-cut the slab. But, um, but yeah. You get these clay scraps all over, so you got to be a little bit cautious. And if we were going to do these plates upside down for our cake stand, cupcake stand, we uh, we don't really need to have a foot on them because it's going to be upside down, and this measurement here is going to create that uh, that gap for us to hide that hardware. Tips coming up here. In one second. So again, this is the thing where you want to try to figure out a way to make adjustments. So this one, what I can do is um, I can take a little, basically a line, something that makes a line from from corner to corner, and that will give me that will give me the center. Of where this uh, kickstand is going to go. So then we just put our, our hole in there, somewhere underneath, somewhere, somewhere just slightly under three eighths of an inch, between a quarter and a three eighths, depending on how much your clay, uh, clay um, thing. And then you don't, I wouldn't really worry about, um, you know, where it, uh, where it appears in your drawing. If you're really worried about that, then you could add decals or other design after after the fact, after you make it. But, um, but yeah. So then say, we've got about five minutes left, looks like. So I'm gonna kind Kevin of- Kevin is, is giving me the hand signals. Let me know. <laughs> is it less than five minutes? About five it's five or? minutes. 
Five minutes. Yep. No, he keeps telling me he's yeah, it's five minutes. <laughs> okay. So you can see how this um you know, once everything is fired, obviously, we'll have this nice stand in here. And then we'll be able to put this on top. And we'll have this nice tiered um cupcake stand. And so you really could do this with any sizes. And that's the beauty, right? The only thing is that you have to do is put a hole in your plate prior to firing it. Um, and what I would do is uh, here, here's one here's one other good tip. It's a uh, oh, this is, and this is a great uh, thing that we finish on here. Then we can talk other stuff. But um, this this plate is way different. Um, as far as drying is concerned, as far as the physics of drying, it's got this nice big outside lip. So if I just leave this dry in a in a calm environment, it's going to it's going to uh, if it dries evenly, it's going to dry really well. If I were to dry this one that has um, this not not of this large exterior lip, I want to dry this upside down so the weight of the plate is going to hold it. From um, moving around and warping, so so again, there's a little bit different depending on what what piece you're making, um, of how how you want that drawing to happen. I know sometimes people use weights and different things, uh, especially with these plates that don't have that that out exterior lip on them. Uh, they uh, you um, yeah. So now I can use the weight of the clay to kind of hold the plate. So that's that's how I deal with the drying part of that. And so, but the key for me, the key is that it's uh, the drying is even. So it can go super fast, like if you're in Arizona and it's hot outside, as long as there's not a breeze coming from one direction um, and drying this side off first, it uh, it will it will uh, kind of keep its shape. So this is the um, the three tier. I, only, I like to use two tiers versus three, but you get enough hardware to make three. So it just depends on what you want to do. But um, anyway, it's a, it's a fun add-on to really kind of give your your handmade pieces value and uh, and uh, do your um, do what you need to do. So yeah, I love them. And we had a question about the ovals that you showed. The new ones are those slims or those standard size forms? There's I couldn't standard, tell. Yeah. They're standard size, okay. So All right. the hope is for them to stack so that they, uh, yeah. All right, it's, so I don't know if there's, I'm gonna see if there's any more questions slim, coming in. That's about slims in a later conversation to their uh, folks. And we can talk about more of the difference about that too when we're talking about um, round plates because slims are really only for the round, round pieces. All right, so thank you so much, Jeff, for that. Uh, you know, we are so thrilled to have you joining us for this whole week. Um, I think we're gonna pull it back to me. I don't know if you wanna sign off and we'll pull it back to me. Oh, I'm on? <laughs> <laughs> I said, do you wanna pull it back to me? And he just don't. Thank you, Jeff, so much for, for this. Jeff's gonna be joining us every day during ClayshareCon. So if you have questions that weren't answered today, you have four more chances to ask him. You also can just mess, message Jeff or email Jeff. You ask me, I'll send it along to Jeff too. So making those tiered stands is really fun. I can't wait to make myself a set of those. And uh, we can't wait to see Jeff's new forms. Remember, if you wanna save 20% off on GR Pottery Forms, you can go to his website and it's automatic. Click through the ClayshareCon link. Just go to ClayshareCon.com under sponsor you'll see GR Pottery Forms. Click on that and it'll take you to his page. Click through the link and there you go. Place your order. All right, everybody. I'll be back in about 15 minutes. We're going to be doing adding bling to your work. So we're going to be doing gold luster and other lusters. We'll be talking about that and I'll be doing a little demo and uh, that'll be wrapping up the next demo is our last one for the day. And then the giveaway, which Jeff's got a huge stackable form giveaway in today's giveaway prizes. All right, everyone. I'll see you soon.